Good morning, people. Uh, in order for you guys to be able to make some decent looking things in the correct format and the correct uh, so that it just fits in with the rest of the uh, the uh, portraits that are available from the site by default. <coughs> the first uh, thing that we are going to do is to uh, install the program th that we're going to be using. Uh, well, the program that we're going to be using. It's GIMP. Uh, the oh, I don't know it's some acronym it's strange it's a strange name um, uh, either way let's go get that done first thing you do is go to gimp.org uh, where you can download this absolutely free program there's a big download button at the top uh, where you can basically just uh, uh, download the application and install as usual it's, it opens up the traditional um, wizard you just click next 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 and you got it installed uh, once that's done you fire up fire it up uh, let's do that and the first time you run it it might take a couple of minutes to, to start it does some scanning of uh, things I don't know exactly what it does uh, it, it takes a minute or two uh, even on a fairly powerful computer and uh, after that, you get to uh, to this point. Uh, usually, you have a bit more uh, running. Uh, right now, I've closed everything just to make sure that in case you've installed this program before and clicked uh, things that you're not really used to, uh, that and and you don't know where to find all these things. I'm going to try to help you out. The first thing uh, that you're going to see is this main window, which is um, basically where the, where the, your image will be created. Uh, we currently don't have an image, but uh, we're going to sort that in a second. Uh, the first thing I do is, uh, since I've closed all the other panels that normally open up, uh, I'm going to open up uh, uh, in the Windows menu, there's a new toolbox uh, entry. I click that, and we get a toolbox. Uh, it's basically the tools that you can use to manipulate um, your image. Uh, so, um, since we don't want this to be, uh, this layout is a bit awkward to use, at least for me, I'm more used to the Adobe Photoshop type uh, programs. There's in the Windows menu, there's a single window mode, which I think is pretty neat. Uh, this allows you to uh, basically show, uh, have everything in one window, which is more traditional and what most of you guys are probably used to. So, uh, now we have uh, the, the uh, program set up uh, with the core core basics. Obviously, we can't really do anything here much. We're missing some docs. We're missing all sorts of stuff. But we're, we're going to get to that when we when we need these uh, things. The next step is to find a an image that you, we want to actually use a base image. Unless you're obviously, if you're an artist, you can draw them yourself. Which is, um, yeah, okay, fine. And then you probably know all this stuff anyway. So you're not going to be, most likely not going to be needing this guide if, you, if you're used to using GIMP or if you're an artist. Or, but let's say that you have a photo that you've taken or, or something. I don't, so I just go, uh, go find one. Um, on Flickr, I found this image, which is a reasonable image to use for, uh, for a human team, for example. Um, this particular image, uh, one thing that is important for me, at least, is... Uh, copyright. Uh, this image is what's called Creative Commons. That means that it's free to use uh, as long as you give attribution. So this image has been taken by Tim Donovan, um, and by doing this, I'm I'm able to uh, use this image for this video, for example. Um, but uh, one thing is a bit complicated uh, in terms of copyrights and stuff. If I was going to use this image uh, on Fumble, uh, th the image still needs to be attributed to Tim. Uh, and that's um, not something that is easily done uh, at the moment. Uh, but uh, for now, uh, I'm just basically going to do the portrait but not upload it to the site. So I'm not going to be doing anything bad with the image. I'm following the license terms. 
which is something that you guys should be considering uh, when you're looking at images online. Make sure that you have a license to use things, otherwise you can get in trouble, and that would be bad. So, uh, this image, uh, obviously we're going to take this guy in the center, whoever he is. Um, it says Douglas on his shoulder pad. I don't know. Uh, it's probably someone semi-famous. Uh, uh, either way, I'm going to take this image and I'm going to use this guy as a portrait. And in order to do that, we click down here uh, in Flickr, download the photo, and we use original size. You're going to see that this size is absolutely humongous. This is taken from a very high quality camera. And uh, yeah, there we go. The preview window opens. I'm on a Mac if you haven't noticed, but the, the application works pretty much the same regardless of uh, what you're using. But I've downloaded the image and now I'm uh, going to open it up in GIMP. So we go open. Into, in the file menu, obviously, and drag this window there, and we have. Uh, let's let's find it. Let's find it. Download somewhere. There we go. Where did it go? I'm just trying to find this image. Should be there. What's it called? It's called something. Eight one, something. There we go. That's the image. <coughs> A lot of stuff to done, to find. But either way, uh, I open it up in in GIMP. Hide that window for now. And here we have the image. And the first thing that we want to do basically is to remove the background. And uh, in order to do that, we have a bunch of tools in GIMP that we can use for that specific purpose. But before we go uh, too fancy, we're just going to take the lasso tool. Uh, you have it up here in the in the free select uh, free select tool. Um, it allows me to basically do a rough cut. I just hold the button, mouse button and do a rough uh, outline of the guy here. Don't have to be very precise at this point. But like that. There we go. And connect it there. And then now we have uh, him here. Uh, at this point, we go to the Select menu, and there's an Invert uh, option. Um, on the Mac, it's Option I. It's probably, uh, I don't know, Control I or Alt I, probably. Something like that on, on, the Mac, on the Windows version. But on the Mac, it's Command I, or in the Select menu, Invert. What that does is that instead of selecting only this guy, it selects everything except him. And uh, when we've done that, we've selected all the stuff outside him. We do uh, edit and clear. And it removes uh, most of the background. Uh, that's just uh, something so that we don't get distracted by the, the humongous image. We can make the image a bit smaller. So. We invert selection again, so we get this particular, uh, only this uh, dude here. Uh, we do image and crop to selection. What this does is that it's going to cut away all the white uh, spaces around, uh, around the selection. So you're going to see that the image is much smaller now. Notice that this is also back, back here. It's probably going to be extremely small for you, but uh, this is 50% uh, uh, of 50% scaling. So if I would, if I was going to do this to 100%, you're going to see how humongous this picture is. And yeah, this is obviously way too big to use as um, as a portrait. But we're going to get to that. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is that we're going to start uh, making a mask. Uh, that's what it's called. Basically, what we want to be figure out where what is the guy and what's the background. So we're going to do this uh, more precisely. In order to do that, uh, we are going to need something called uh, the Layers menu. In uh, Windows, Dockable Dialogs, you have Layers. Uh, you go click that, it shows up. Uh, let's put that in there. I, I just dragged it from the right to the left uh, with the mouse, just to have everything in the same, same place. So now we have a layer here. Great. 
we want to do in the layer menu, uh, first of all, we want to add under transparency, add alpha channel. That means that we can deal with transparency so that uh, the image can be transparent. It's, uh, you know, well, you're going to see what it actually does. Uh, you get some sort of uh, hatch, uh, well, some grid system in the background. Uh, we can, I can show you how it works. If I take, oh, uh, image and, s uh, sorry, select none. So I remove the selection. And then if I erase, you're going to see that there is that this cross background means that it's actually transparent. There is nothing there in the image. All right. Uh, let's go, let's undo that. Not that it matters, but uh, it's just for, yeah, because I'm, I'm picky. Okay, so instead of, do, instead of erasing everything manually, which is a big pain in the behind to do, uh, we are going to uh, use something called a layer mask uh, and uh, use that to basically what that does is that we, we're going to mark what do we want to show and what do we want to be hidden. So we put we do right click on on the layer here uh, in the layer panel and we do add layer mask. This one, this will drop, uh, show a, a small window. You can initialize, initialize layer mask to, and a lot of options. I'm just leaving it white uh, with, fu with full opacity, which means that everything will actually be shown. So nothing happens when you do that. But you see here in the layer, we have a mask. Uh, well, we have a second square uh, next to, next to the image. So I can switch between them uh, by just clicking on, uh, on the respective little preview. Okay, and the idea is that if the mask is white, we are going to see uh, we're going to going to see uh, the image. If the mask is black, we're not going to see the part of the image. So if I take the brush tool, print brush tool there, uh, and uh, draw over here, you're going to see that it just disappears. Uh, notice that I'm drawing with something that the the color here is selected is black, which means that in layer mask itself. Uh, this is a black uh, black brush, uh, and this is exactly what it does. It just makes just hides stuff uh, on this particular image or on this layer to be precise. But let's undo that. I don't actually want to be doing just that. Undo paintbrush. There we go. So uh, the next thing that we're gonna do is this foreground select tool uh, in the in the toolbox uh, we have one of the tools is called the foreground select tool this is the primary tool that we're going to use to uh, to uh, to find what's the actual the foreground and what's the background and, and use that later so we're going to make we're, we're going to build a selection around the the guy instead of using this lasso tool and go be very very precise and it, that would be very hard to get correct we're going to be using this uh, specific tool, foreground select tool, which is a quite a nice tool that they've added. Uh, let me zoom out back to uh, back out to fifty percent. That was five hundred. There we go. And the the idea is that well, the first thing that we do is that we do a very quick lasso again. I could probably have done this uh, lasso thing. Uh, just ignore doing the first lasso thing, but let's do this again. I do a very quick and broad uh, view. There we go. And at this point, uh, everything is blue. Uh, and since we're ha we have blue in the actual image, the, the, it's not very convenient. I'm sure that we can get a tool options here somewhere. So that was a Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and Tool Options. And that allows us, that shows us the tool options panel here next to the layers. I can switch back and forth if I want to. But there's a preview color. We're going to use red because we know that we don't really have that much red in the image. Uh, it just, it doesn't make any difference. If you prefer the blue, that's fine. Uh, use that. Um, but I'm, I prefer the red because we have blue in the image, which means that it's a bit easier to see what's what. 
So now that we've done, now, we, now that we're in this actual mode, all we can do with this tool is really interesting. We just, you see that you have a paintbrush. What we do is that we just paint stuff that's that we think is part of the foreground. So this is, uh, we're gonna paint on the guy and get some, we don't have to be precise here either, but we're just gonna tell the application that this is what we, what we consider to be the foreground. Uh, and then once we're done, I just hold the mouse button and drag. It's not hard in that. Here we go. We let go. It can, it's going to think a bit, and then it's going to get. We're going to get a first uh, thing, first view here. Now it did a huge cut. You see that it's uh, the red is just outside here, which is not very good. Uh, so what we need to do is to to mark background on the in the tool options. There's a Interactive refinement. Uh, you see that there's a shortcut with uh, uh, with the the command uh, marker, basically. So this is a shortcut to switch between. So if I hold the command button, you see on the left here uh, on the tool options that when I click the command button, it switches to mark background. So we can we can use this to switch back and forth. So now, now that we know that the uh, the image has been too much has been considered as the foreground, and this is probably just because I'm I was outside this uh, first uh, cut that I did, which was unnecessary. But let's uh, continue. Uh, I hold the command key. Alternatively, you can just switch to mark background, and, and it's gonna and, and it's going to do exactly the same thing. But I'm going to hold the command key and start painting, and you see that this is white this time, and we're going to just mark this stuff. This is um, this is background stuff. So I'm painting the background, and basically what we're going to do is that we're going to spend a lot of time with this tool until we're happy with the selection, basically, so that the all the background is is has this red tone on it, and all the foreground, or most of the foreground has uh, doesn't, uh, pretty much, and that will allow us to to do this properly and notice we still remember that we're still using the uh, the high resolution image we're going to stay there as long as possible e even though it, it makes things slower you see that the processing takes a while because the image is fairly big uh, so when i release things it's going to be it's going to take a while to do things and at, after a while when we get closer up when we get closer we can just zoom in and uh, we continue painting, uh, and you can you can just do this, do an area, uh, and it will it will probably figure out that the hold the hold this. No, it didn't. Let's try. Oh, okay, that was the wrong. I forgot to press. You see, it's black. That means that I'm I'm telling the app that this is foreground, which is not the thing I want to do. Let's switch it over manually so I don't have to hold the key because I'm lazy. But if I do this, um, then it's probably going to unmark the the stuff that's in this circle as well. There we go. So I'll just go through this. I should probably, uh, let's see. You see that it's, it's going to just slowly do things, uh, uh, slowly get things uh, marked as background. And the, the reason that we're doing this in the high resolution is that once we scale down, scale things down, all the mistakes that we've done, or if you haven't been super precise, it's not gonna, it's not gonna destroy anything. It's not gonna be basically be noticeable. You see that the the helmet is very tough to uh, to get the outline perfect uh, because I'm not really that zoomed in at this point yet, uh, but. In the end, when when you're close enough, when you scale things down, it's gonna it's gonna look pretty good anyway. Uh, there is a lot of uh, a lot of this to do, obviously. So I'm gonna continue zooming in. Let's do 500 percent, and hopefully, we are going to. Let's see. Continue painting here.
And you see that I made a tiny mistake here, I cut too much out, so I'm just putting that back in. And I did that with uh, holding the option key or the shortcut. It's gonna, in, in the Windows version, it's gonna show what the shortcut is, if it's Alt or uh, whatever it may be. And I just try to be as precise as possible here. When we get very close and we're, we're very zoomed in, uh, this is 500%. I'm, I might, uh, might go a tiny bit more in just because it's more precise. Uh, depends on how much uh, you want to spend, how much time you want to spend doing this. And we continue across the top here. And you, whichever way works for you, if, if you think that it's easier to, to draw upward or if it's easier to draw downward, I mean, use whatever you want. You can always, uh, you can always switch back and forth between the, uh, marking the foreground and the background here. So if you make a mistake, if I was going to do, if I do this by mistake, uh, I've now basically told the application that this is the background, which is obviously not what I want. So uh, at, that, at that point, uh, we basically just hold the, the key and paint it back. And hopefully it will disappear. Well, it will. So, yeah, this isn't perfect, but let's leave it at that because it's close enough, I'm sure. Uh, and we continue here. This is background. You actually see that there's a the, the lens that the person who took the picture has. You see that there's a this purple tint uh, that's called chromatic aberration. It happens with the because of physics basically, and um, yeah, the person hasn't really gotten rid of that uh, from the it's from the raw image. In, in in our for our purpose, it, it doesn't matter. This purple tinting here is an optical effect and not really there uh, in reality, but. That's a sidetrack, basically. So we continue drawing. This helmet thing is a bit more complicated, obviously, as you can see. Because we're, we're going to get to the point where we have to, have to actually uh, isolate the, the bars of the, the safety cage, whatever, the visor. Not a visor, I don't know what it's called, whatever, it's football. I'm not used to that being European, so I don't know the old terminology. Um, let's continue be sort of precise when we're doing this. Uh, this is obviously, as you, <coughs> as you can see, this is the, uh, the more time-consuming part of doing this. Uh, but spend some time with it and it's going to look pretty good in the end. And this will give you an idea of how time-consuming it is to actually do this kind of stuff uh, for people who, who spend their time and do these images for you. So show some show some appreciation for people who, who spend their time and actually does this uh, if they help you out uh, because this can be very tedious and uh, time-consuming. And the more time you spend here, the better the final result will be. You see, I don't have to fill in the uh, the interior here uh, because the tool is intelligent enough to uh, to figure out that I wanted to get rid of all that. Let's see, I think that this is also uh, a blank space. And hopefully we can soon be done with this. Well, we know that there is a big, a lot of uh, picture left to do this on, so just stay patient and uh, the end result will be good. And, and yeah, for, for, your, uh, for your information, I've already done this with this picture once and I'm doing this again, uh, basically just to show you guys how it's done. So I spent some time doing this before even. So this is the second time. <laughs> Interesting stuff to know. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, here we f uh, we continue with this, and 
And the, if, if you're doing this on an image that's actually small enough to begin with, uh, so that it's the correct size for, uh, for portrait, uh, and we're going to get to what the correct size is a bit later, uh, then you're going to have to be very much more precise when you're doing this stuff. Uh, it's actually a good thing that this image is so big because it allows me to to not spend a, an enormous amount of time uh, finding and s fixing the the edges because um, as you can see if, if you zoom in even more uh, once this is done the tool there you go if I zoom in even more I go up to a thousand percent you're going to see that uh, all these images here, uh, this is what causes some problems. You see here's a light on his skin. And if, he, if you're very, if, he, if this is the correct size, if I, it's really difficult for me to cut this and to deal with this um, outline here, well, the, this shading, because you see that you, it's very bright uh, in, at one point, and then it sort of goes darker and darker and darker. And if you would you isolate this image and put it, on a on a bright background, so a white background, or um, for example, the, the the parchment background that we were using for uh, for uh, player portraits uh, by default, you 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 will see that there is going to be a dark outline because this is uh, because the the background will be lighter than uh, than this shading. So this part is something that is pretty difficult to deal with. And it, it also <coughs> ends up showing up as sort of outlines for uh, for images, uh, which is not always something that you want to have. But uh, let's go back to work on this stuff. And there we go. We're way too much zoomed in. This is not really useful. I'm going to zoom out a bit again. And we'll see what Okay, now we have his arm. And again, I don't have to be super, super precise because I know I'll be scaling this image down uh, pretty significantly, so this isn't absolutely critical at this point and at some point maybe I'm gonna do another guide where uh, where I deal with something that's actually uh, this particular when, when, when you have to deal with the shadings on the edges of everything here uh, right now I don't have to because I'm gonna scale this down so much so for now I don't have to be super super precise uh, but ideally I want this to be as clean as possible because it reduces the risk of getting artifact into uh, into the final image. So we take that edge away. That was a bit dark. And with his hand. And I'm sure there are other better ways of doing this stuff. If you're if you're using Photoshop, I know that there's a tool that does this uh, slightly better overall. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, not everyone has the the means to buy a license of Photoshop. So we do make do with what we have. And this is free. And it's GIMP is actually not a bad program. Uh, I'm not anywhere near being an expert in this, uh, but. I know a fair amount of things about it and it's very powerful but the UI is not quite as uh, as uh, well designed as uh, as Adobe Photoshop continue around here if I had not done the, the first cut at the beginning I would probably have had an easier job here I wouldn't have had to deal with all this uh, 
specifically. You get other issues where um, uh, where the interior will be showing as a background as well, which was very visible when I switched to the red view, but it's not the end of the world. I, I'm going to show you another thing that we're going to do later uh, when we go back to, uh, to the layer mask that we created before, if you remember. Uh, but for now, we're just going to try to get a proper selection. So again, what we're doing here is still trying to make a selection uh, that is precise or as, as precise as we can get it uh, for this guy. And this is just a way to paint a selection rather than using the lasso tools and, and whatnot to make this l easier. Because using the lasso tool is very difficult to get right uh, if, if you're going to do it all at once. And it's hard to, to scroll around uh, the image and be this zoomed in and still follow the, the edges. But let's continue down to his legs. And let's see. I have I have this area here. I need to zoom scroll up a bit. Oh no, I don't. It was smart enough to understand that, but I missed a tiny part. Uh, we continue. And obviously, I mean this is pretty simple uh, in in theory. Just you just have to find the fall paint around the edges of everything and uh, it's it's easy to switch back and forth if you make mistakes remember remember that there's a key a sh a shortcut to switch between painting the foreground and the background uh, right now I'm in the background mode because I'm predominantly using that uh, if you're doing the other way then uh, then and primarily painting the foreground then you want to switch uh, that to the default so you don't have to hold the key all the time because we're all lazy and don't want to be pushing keys unnecessarily. At least I am. Make a loop around that. Uh, continue down this leg. And then let's see what happens with it. If I'm lucky, it's going to detect the, the tiny little thing. Uh, well, it should, actually. Because one of the options in, in the tools is this contiguous option. That's why probably it's going to uh, detect that as the background. Because it's said that the foreground is going to be, uh, everything is going to be connected. There is no free free little space that's not going to be connected. So if, if I make a drawing like this and say that this is background, this white thing, uh, the this isolated blob there uh, will probably disappear because I'm, I've told it to be contiguous. So the the blob, the green patch here of background will disappear. So that's why it does that. So I, I can probably just paint this down here. We'll get this very difficult to see shoelaces but let's keep those in the shot I don't know if what's actual shoelaces and what's a shadow it's so difficult to see but it doesn't matter it, it's gonna disappear anyway at the end at least to some extent it will look fairly natural there we go and that should get rid of all this background grass there, perfect and we scroll again, follow this around. And again, this is difficult to see what's what. There are some, some spikes on the shoes. Um, but let's just do this. I'm just going to assume that this is what that is. Again, sometimes it's hard to see what's a shadow and what's, uh, what's actual foreground. But yeah. Um, I don't know. Is this? 
uh, let's call that shadow and cut it out. In the end, this will be very, very small, uh, so it's not going to be the end of the world. Um, so, but uh, again, uh, the more time you spend in this phase, the better the end result will be. Uh, I figure that I don't really want to be doing this for many hours at this time for this one image, because I'm not actually going to use this image uh, because of the licensing terms. And I'm just doing this to show you the process. And I probably missed a bit there, or overdid a bit. I'm gonna cut that. I'm gonna paint that back. So I hold the the option key and paint back the black foreground. And then I cut this off. So I isolate this whole green patch that goes down, and it's gonna disappear. Again, that's based on the set on the contiguous setting. If you if you don't want to if you want to have an isolated block of something, if it's a ball or uh, a, a ball, for example, that's away from the player's hands, uh, that's just floating free, then you need to disable this contiguous setting. Otherwise, you you lose that, and it's going to be impossible for you to to have two separate blobs uh, that's considered the foreground uh, carefully just paint up this leg And obviously, sometimes it takes a while to uh, for the the program to process. I have a fairly quick computer, so if you're working with large image images like this, it, it could be uh, be a bit tiresome. Uh, you need patience, basically. Uh, just painting all this stuff takes patience, and if you also have to wait for a few seconds every time you let go of the mouse button, then it takes even more patience. But that's what it takes. If you want something. Uh, some a really nice image then you have to spend more more and more time in this particular part of the process and let's continue I'm, I'm probably going to have some haloing uh, here and there some of these outline uh, things it might actually show up in the resulting image but yeah it's always possible to go back and redo things if you're unhappy with the result or or even edit manually. If you fe feel that there's a couple of pixels that are looking a bit weird, you can go back afterwards when you're done and just correct those things. But again, that's, uh, that's a topic for another video or stream or whatever I choose to do if I end up uh, doing that. If people think this is interesting enough. And here we probably have some, I'm going to go back and cut away some more of these green things, uh, especially in this high contrast area where, where the shoe is pitch black and then you have the green area. I probably, this might actually shine through at the end. So I'm going to go back and cut away a bit of this, um, this green part. And this will essentially cut away a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of his legs and his shoes or whatever uh, it's not the end of the world uh, again uh, I know that I'm going to be resizing this image uh, significantly uh, a bit later in the process so it's not going to be the it doesn't have to be super precise and if I lose a couple of pixels in this in this stage it's it's insignificant it's just going to be a tenth of a pixel in the end result anyway uh, there we go. And there's this thing on top of the shoe that looks green that I'm going to cut out. I'm going to say that there are two shoelaces basically here. Or 
two parts of the shoelaces and hopefully we're gonna at some point be done with this and we check here his foot no oh, his other foot imagine that he has two feet uh, we paint 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 and there And you're gonna see also that this this part of the shoe is uh, slightly out of focus, or not probably not out of focus, but there is a motion blur in the raw image because the, his foot was probably moving fast, fairly fast in in relation to the the shutter speed of the camera. So that's why this is a bit blurry. But that's okay. I probably cut that way too too much there. Oh. Okay. Um, okay. Whatever. Um, the image decided to scroll, uh, so I need to correct that. I just hold the Option key and repaint foreground. I'm going to repaint some of this that I took away too much of, as well. And now it looks terrible. But again, I can fix that. I'm not that skilled with a mouse. But there we go. I remember that we're we're five hundred percent zoomed in. This is going to be barely noticeable if we zoom out. Uh, all these irregularities, and when we scale things down again, as well, it's going to be practically invisible. Gonna be so so little difference in the end result, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's see. Let's do this. That should cut away all this grass that we just skipped uh, earlier. There we go. Perfect. This uh, shoe spike looks a bit weird, but it'll be okay, I think. We can see how it looks at the end. And here again, it's very blurry and difficult to see what's the edge of the shoe and what's the grass. Um, but again, just guess, basically, and you're probably going to be fine. I released the mouse button a bit too early there. Or not. Yeah, the app is a bit slow. Like I said, uh, the image is large, and this is a fairly complicated process for the computer to deal with. Uh, so this will, can be a bit slow, uh, and you just have to deal with it, pretty much. Or buy a faster computer, but that's probably not something that most people want to do for just this feature. And I'm sure that there are other people who, who can come up with other ideas on how to do this uh, more efficiently. This is one way to do it. and. Uh, there are probably 10 different ways of doing exactly the same thing that I'm doing here. And the process that I'm doing here, is, again, is that I'm isolating the foreground from the background uh, and making a selection in this case. And you could technically have done this uh, directly in the layer mask that we're going to get to in, after we're done here. But uh, I like this tool. I think it's easy to draw with. Uh, it's easy to see what's uh, what. And let's go back. There's not that much left remaining to go, I think. I think we started up at the helm. Yeah, and again, my mouse decided to scroll. So we correct. That's one of the benefits of this particular tool is that it's easy to go back and forth between uh, between drawing foreground and background and correcting mistakes. Uh, it's very forgiving. It's almost like this painting with number stuff that most of uh, us probably did when we were kids. Maybe you still do, I don't know. 
all that's missing are the numbers here and, and that's practically it we're doing it in a modern form so let's see here you're gonna see that there's an arm from another another person on the photo obviously we don't want those random arms in the image at least not for this one maybe it was maybe if it was a chaos team uh, random arms flying around would maybe be interesting but we're not going to use those continue drawing up his arm and again this is uh, when we get to the top here when I'm able to scroll up this particular part there you see that there's some other skin color here you just have to guess where his arm is uh, going I don't know why that is doing that. I think my mouse is losing batteries and it's randomly scrolling things oh well we'll see it shouldn't be that much left yeah. You're gonna see here that the uh, that the arm is I'm, I'm I've painted too much basically here because the the shininess here from the lighting uh, I was cutting a bit too too much into his arm, but we can fix that again and then continue painting around where we want this. And again, you see his this purple shine here. High contrast means that the the optics of the camera or the uh, the lens he was using on the camera show that it's not absolutely perfect. But you know, it's very different. It's very common to see that that chromatic aberration, the purple fringing that you see here, and when it's high contrast things. So if you actually zoom in into a lot of images, you're going to see that if they if the original artist didn't process it away and got rid of it with some filters, it's going to be showing there for most cameras. And you're probably if you're if you are taking images on your own, uh, it's something to look for. And I did it again. I need to figure out what's going on with this mouse. <coughs> But again, not the end of the world. Let's just pretend that I don't really know how to paint things. And do that. Let me fix that. And all right, this shoulder pad. We're going to be back at this helm very shortly, I think. And then once we're done with this, we can go onward to the next part of the process. I'm sure you're all super excited about this particular part of this uh, task. I'm sure you you all want to be doing this on your own very soon it's absolutely spectacularly fun to do let's see clean this up and okay How, how's this is this all right um, it'll do I think let's do zoom out a bit more let's go to a hundred percent and the image is fairly okay 
but I'm going to do something that you might run into. Uh, this is obviously going to be exaggerated. But sometimes when you're doing this process, um, you're going to have uh, some spots uh, in the actual foreground uh, because of uh, how the tool works. So I'm going to add a couple of spots uh, and leave them there uh, until the next part of the process. They're going to be much more visible in the next part. So sometimes, especially if you're using the, the blue preview color, so if I switch back to blue here, and then I use this blue, uh, I make another dot here where the background is blue anyway. It's going to be sometimes very difficult to identify this particular uh, blue circle here and they might be much much smaller than than what I'm showing with this tool at the moment. Uh, but uh, either way, uh, now we've done this, I have some remaining spots that I'm going to fix in the next part or that's going to be very visible there. So when we're done, we press enter. Uh, so I'm pressing the enter key and at this point you see that their selection is much much closer and it switches it takes away that blue uh, part uh, and now we have a pretty selection let's go back to 50% so it fits on the screen and we press uh, the alt key and click on this mask here on the, in the layers menu uh, you're gonna see that there, there are two uh, two uh, little object, no, well, two uh, panels here, like I said before, when we created the layer mask. And I'm going to undo because I accidentally lost my uh, selection. So the selection is here, and we've used the Alt key to press, uh, uh, to, to switch between the mask itself and the raw image. So uh, now we switch to here, and like I said before, the white parts of this this mask, which we're looking at raw, I clicked Alt and on the mask to show it. The the uh, the white part will be left, uh, well, will be showing in the image, uh, which is what we want to do. And the the stuff that's black on this mask image will be hidden. So what we want to do is invert this selection. So again, select invert, so that we're selecting. Now we've selected everything around the player. You're going to see that by the edges of the, the actual um, the image itself, the marching ants things that you see with the selection are going to show. And if, if I switch, uh, if I invert again, you're going to see that the, well, you might not see it on the actual video, but there are marching ants with the selection. And uh, right now the, select, the, the borders of the image are green and black, and they're not moving, which means that I've selected the player. Uh, but again, we wanted to switch, invert the selection, uh, select invert. And then uh, we do edit and clear, and that did nothing because I'm probably using the wrong uh, colors. Uh, just going to verify that exactly. So uh, in the toolbox, you can see that you can switch between the foreground and the background, uh, and you want to put the black in the background. And after we after you've done that, you can do edit and clear, which will make all the background uh, black. And as you can see now, we can uh, we can uh, let's see we go s select and select none. Now we remove the selection, and you're gonna see that now all these dots are fairly vis visible. Uh, if we go to 100% again, uh, put 100 in the bottom here. Uh, under the under the actual image here, there's a, it says 100% uh, at the moment. And there you can just put 50 or 200 or 400 or whatever zoom level you want. Uh, you can probably do that in, in the view menu as well. View zoom, and you can switch back and forth between different scalings. I, I use the shortcut down down at below the image panel. But at this point, it's very visible. Uh, those little dots that we had uh, are very visible obviously even the one even the blue one that was in the on the blue background uh, shows up very clearly here so what we do there is that we switch to the brush tool uh, in the toolbox we make sure that white is the foreground color and we paint over this stuff and 
but we fix those uh, tiny dots. Uh, when, when you're actually doing this yourselves on some images, you're gonna see that there are gonna be some small dots left over from the tool itself uh, that you might have missed when you're doing the, the masking in the, about when you were doing the selection stuff uh, in the last part of this process. And at this point, they show up very clearly and it's very easy for you to, uh, to fix that actually with just painting over it with white. Okay, so we go back to the to the layer menu. Uh, we hold Alt again and click on the mask. And you're gonna see that the, uh, we're gonna switch again to, I can use the menu this time, zoom 50%. And now you see that the all the background is gone and all we have left is the player, exactly like we want it. And you're gonna see that, yeah, it's, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. There are some black borders around his helmet. There's probably some green borders around around his legs or whatever here and there. Um, not the end of the world. Um, in terms of uh, size of the image, I think that it's fairly good. Uh, it looks like, sort of like how a portrait um, is actually appears on uh, on the site, so we have uh, a correct uh, height and uh, width um, aspect ratio or, or correlation. So we we see that the it sort of look it sort of would probably fit in in a player image. Okay, so the next part would be to add a background to this because a lot of people want to do that. So we go. We just leave GIMP for a moment and we go uh, to a browser and I've done a search for, I don't remember, I don't actually remember what I searched for. It was something like a fumble portrait background template, something like that. And you're going to see that what ball has uh, graciously put up the background uh, on photo bucket. So we, we go there. Um, I'm sure that this can probably put somewhere on the site uh, in like the help system or something. Maybe it's already there, but I'm, I just use Google to find it because I didn't actually know where it was. So um, here's the image. And uh, you copy this down or save it on your computer. And uh, once you've done that, you can hide your uh, browser again. And we open another image. And I have that there, and I have documents, fumble images, and player portraits background. And I open this. So now we have two documents. You see that there are two tabs. I can switch back and forth between them. Um, this picture is 100% scaled. This picture is 50% scaled. So if we, if we actually switch this to zoom and 100%. You're gonna see that this picture is a bit larger than this. So obviously we need to do something about that. The first thing we do is that we take this image, we can, uh, uh, we can, what do we do? Um, yes, we create a new layer. Uh, at the bottom of the layers panel, again, uh, you can switch between the different panels. If you lost it at some point, dockable dialogues, layers. And uh, at the bottom, there's a new document type uh, icon. And you can probably do layer menu, new layer, if you want to. But let's click there. And it's going to show another little dialog that asks for a layer name. Uh, you can do that if you want to. Let's call that player uh, 95 pixels wide, 147 pixels high. That's pretty much the, the resolution of the base image that we have here, which is the correct format for, for um, portraits on Fumble. Uh, layer field type, transparency, we want a transparent layer. It's, it's gonna be uh, this, uh, it's not gonna show anything. It shows that the, the layer shows up here. It's above uh, the, uh, the background here, the portrait background that we just uh, lo loaded. And if I hide this by clicking the eye icon there, it, you're going to see that it disappears and this transparent cross hatch, whatever thing shows up again. But now we have a layer. Okay, now we have an empty layer there and we want to fill this layer with something. We go back here to the image that we've just worked on. I zoom out. I do, uh, I was going to do a shortcut. Command A, select all. Uh, now we've selected the whole image 
and we go edit and copy obviously control C on on Windows or command C on the Mac <coughs> after that we go now we've copied the image and we go back to this um, portrait background we do edit and paste so control V or command V depending on your system and this is absolutely humongous uh, and we can probably in the layer menu you can probably do somewhere scale layer there we go scale layer in the layer menu and we switch uh, this to let's see there's a yeah this chain link thing here what it does is that it connects the width and the height of the image uh, if you want them to if you want to change those sizes individually then you you click that chain and you see that it's a broken chain or well maybe you see it uh, on the on the video or maybe you don't uh, but either way uh, depending on the setting here the, the width and height will follow automatically I'm gonna keep it linked and then I switch to this to 95 pixels wide and check that makes this 146 pixels high let's try that and obviously I copied the wrong thing because I copied uh, the mask that's not what I want to do so I command C or uh, yeah, edit undo uh, which is control Z uh, or control Z or command C or Z whatever you choose uh, so we'd go back here to this image again and make sure that we copy the correct thing do select all to make sure and then we do edit and copy visible that copies the visible things on the screen right now that makes it probably a bit better and go back to the background uh, edit paste okay this looks some something green there is some yeah this looks like the image that we actually wanted but the layer is absolutely too big so we do layer and scale layer and again 95 pixels wide make sure that it's linked and it automatically changes the height of the image okay and now the layer is the correct size so we zoom this in to 500 percent all right and at the, this point uh, we figure that mm, this is probably pretty good um, i switched to any of these selection tools there are a bunch of them and when i go back out to the the board to the image uh, I, you have to click once to actually place the uh, the place the layer down you're gonna see that on the layers menu that there's a floating selection pasted layer here it's not actually part of the image it's just a preview so it hasn't done the paste yet so I go into the image and click once and now you're gonna see in the layer menu that there's a that the image is in the player menu uh, well in the player layer and then I can just turn toggle this visibility back and forth if I want to um, not really necessary at this point but uh, because I'm fairly happy with things however uh, there is another tool that I might might want to use at this point is the move tool uh, you click that and then you drag uh, the layer around so you can p position the player exactly where you want it to be within the portrait uh, normally it's just centered and it's probably not great so I, because it's slightly down and to the left of where I want it to be so I just move it around uh, with the move tool I'm panning the whole layer here basically and uh, one thing to consider is that sometimes if you click on on, uh, on the background you're gonna see that the parchment starts moving and you do not want to do that uh, you want the parchment to be exactly where it was when you loaded the image so when if you accidentally do that let go and do edit undo move layer and uh, to move it back to where it was that way it's going to be the same for uh, according to the the default portraits are going to just the background is going to stay fixed in one place which looks which looks better if you're just switching quickly between 
uh, between different portraits. So at this point, um, I just do a, an inspection of am I happy with what, what this is? Let's see, it can go up to 800 here. And uh, you see that all these small details I was talking about, all the, f uh, the fringing of, uh, of green and the, the dark fringe at, on the helm has disappeared because I've scaled it down so much. So um, I'm pretty happy with the, with this. Um, uh, and there, there we have uh, a portrait. It's practically done. Um, and then its last part is pretty much saving it down to, to a file. And in order to do that, we go to the file menu and uh, we probably uh, do an export. Do we do we do an export to save as? I never remember. Um, export is fine, I'm sure. Um, the thing is, you can do a save as, and it's probably going to be saving it um, mostly as a GIMP specific uh, file. Uh, XCF is their default uh, file format for for the GIMP. So that's why we're going to need to do an export. And uh, I like to, uh, let's call this uh, portrait, or we call this, I don't know, thrower. We call this human thrower portrait. Um, I like the PNG format, ping, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, there are a bunch of different ones uh, that are supported by the site. Well, a bunch. There you can, we support GIF, we support ping, uh, or PNG and we support JPEG. In this case JPEG is not a great idea because we have transparency. You see that the, the edges of the, the parchment are transparent um, which is something that JPEG does not support. So uh, we are saving this as a human thrower portrait. Uh, click the export and we make sure that it's PNG or GIF. I prefer PNG uh, for uh, legacy reasons really, but uh, PNG is a bit more modern. It's, I think, a better format. Click export, and then we get to the next uh, part, uh, the and, and view of the PNG settings, basically. Uh, we can leave most of this uh, the same. Um, yeah, we can click off save, res save resolution and save creation time. Those are not absolutely necessary. It might make the image tiny, tiny bit smaller in file size, and we, and that is basically good for people who are viewing your team or whatever on um, on a slower connection, on like on a mobile phone or or something like that. Then they don't have to download so much data. So keep file sizes small, and that's essentially why the the site has some file size restrictions as well. Anyway, we click export, and uh, if I then go back to this images f folder, uh, we can see there's the image. Uh, I pull up information about it, and how big is it? It's 37 kilobytes. This can probably be uh, the you can probably make it smaller uh, in using other third-party tools, but that should actually work. And a quick preview: there is a my little portrait of my little image. And yeah, at that point, uh, the next step is obviously um, going to fumble, uh, finding your uh, your gallery. Uh, uploading the image and uh, making a folder, go there, upload the images. I take the portrait there, and and there it is. And then I, then it can obviously be assigned to um, uh, well once the once the image has been approved by uh, this is the approval UI by the way for images. This is fine. Uh, I'm going to approve them all, and then I go back to my gallery. And in stuff, I have my portrait. And uh, the final step uh, is to take a team, uh, go there. I'll uh, 
probably don't have a human. Uh, let's pretend that that guy is a blitzer. Um, change portrait. Go to stuff. Click there. Uh, drag it there. And uh, now the player has that portrait. And that's basically what you do. Um, fairly lengthy re way of doing things. The, the really tedious part or the, the time consuming part is actually isolating the foreground from the background. Beyond that, it's really not that difficult to do. Uh, and even that, even isolating is not really hard. Uh, you just have to spend some time doing it. And in the end, you have uh, an end result which looks pretty good. And that's it for this, um, uh, this uh, live stream. I uh, hope that you found this uh, entertaining or instructional or informative. Uh, I'm going to uh, change this portrait, removing, uh, going back to default. Like I said, I, I don't feel comfortable with using the using this image even though it's probably okay uh, in in because it would probably fall on the fair use uh, i'm going to get rid of it because i don't have copyright and i don't want a human portrait on a an orc anyway so there you have it thank you guys for uh, sticking around and watching and i will catch you some other time. Take care.